limited. We get equilibrium between alveolar and mouth pressures and then exhalation occurring. So what happens now is unique to this mode in that the ventilator adapts automatically to changes in compliance. So if we look right now, we can see that we're on a rate of 12. We're getting tidal volumes about 500 mils, just like I've set on the ventilator, and we're holding it for about two seconds. We're giving a rate of, here's my rate of 12, 21 percent, PIPA 5. So every five seconds, the ventilator is giving me a pressure control breath and achieving a tidal volume of about 500 mils. If I look, I can see that the peak pressure, or the total maximum pressure achieved in the circuit is about 19 centimeters of water pressure. All right. Now there's no difference between mouth pressures and alveolar pressures because we're establishing, this is now my flow graph, a inspiratory pause. So the flow is initially high, decelerates to zero, and then it's held for a short period of time until exhalation occurs. So my peak pressures and my alveolar pressures are the same. Let's see what happens now when I change the compliance of the patient. Right now we've got a compliance measure by the ventilator of about 40 mils per centimeter of water pressure. So let's decrease the patient's compliance. What you'll see initially is that the tidal volumes will be low. And this is because the ventilator is still using the same pressures. It was about 19 and it's slowly ramping up the pressures with each breath being delivered until it starts to get close or meet my tidal volume target of 500 mils. So now my peak pressures have built up to well above my 500 all right, that we initially had. So here now my peak airway pressures, or my, my P-plat pressures, have risen to 30 centimeters of water pressure. Right. My tidal volumes now are back to their 500, just like my target I wanted. So what's happened with the decrease in compliance is the pressures in the circuit have been controlled by the ventilator and allowed to rise, so my pressure control level has gone up, to meet my tidal volume target. If we see the ventilator now is reading the compliance at 23.1 centimeters of water pressure, so I've had a decrease in compliance. Let's see what happens if we now make another change where we increase compliance. So now I've increased the patient's compliance. And what's happening is the pressures will slowly be controlled by the ventilator and will go down with each breath. And in about 30 seconds or so, it'll equalize to what's required to achieve my tidal volume target of 700, or 500. Right now, it's about, I'm putting in about 700 breath, and it's slowly coming down. Notice the pressures are lower until I get to my tidal volume target of 500 mils. Once that's achieved, the ventilator is smart enough now to know that's the pressure control level I need and right now, that's a peak pressure of about 15, or a pressure control level of about 15 centimeters of water pressure. To achieve my tidal volume target of about 500 mils. The compliance of the test lung is now 60 mils per centimeter of water pressure, so it's greatly increased from what it was before. So this particular mode is unique in that it is adaptive to my changes in my patient's lung characteristics. The goal is to meet the tidal volume target, but use pressure control. You notice that the flow waveform is just like with any mode of pressure control. Initially high, because I've got a high pressure gradient between mouth pressures and alveolar pressures, and as that pressure gradient becomes closer and closer to the same, flows decline until I hit an inspiratory plateau, where mouth pressures and airway pressures are equal, and then I cycle into exhalation due to time. So this mode is a true pressure control. It's time triggered or patient triggered. It's pressure limited, but the pressure limit varies depending on what the ventilator decides it needs to achieve my tidal volume goal. And it's time cycled. And my baseline pressure is controlled by my people.
So just to recap, the mode of pressure regulated volume control is referred to as pressure control, CMV adaptive. And what's adaptive about it is that the computer or the ventilator automatically adapts to changes in my patient's lung characteristics. Like all pressure control modes, it can be, particularly in CMV, time triggered, the patient's not breathing, or it can be respond to inspiratory efforts by the patient, and that will be assisted breaths. Like all pressure control modes, the once triggered, the limit is pressure. In this case, though, the operator does not establish the pressure control gradient. Changes in the patient's lung characteristics, so the compliance of the patient, determines how much pressure is required to meet our tidal volume go. Once that's established, though, the breath, is, the breath is pressure controlled and time cycled into exhalation. That's the mode of PC CMV. The mode of pressure regulated volume control can also be con changed to be IMV. So we can have PC pressure control, IMV adaptive. All the elements of the adaptive nature of pressure regulated volume control apply in this mode. But now, instead of every spontaneous effort by the patient being assisted by the ventilator, only the preset breaths as established by your rate control will be assisted by the ventilator. So if you have a rate set of 12, the patient will receive 12 either mandatory or assisted breaths, and any breaths that they breathe above that level will be unassisted, thus the IMV mode. So it's possible to have pressure control, IMV adaptive. Intermittent mandatory ventilation comes into effect where the patient can initiate and breathe at any time, but they will only see, receive the number of breaths as established by the rate control per minute where the ventilator controls all the elements of the breath. The amount of pressure being delivered to the patient and the volume will be controlled by the ventilator. PC, IMV, 